Yes, ladies and gentlemen, DLC Phase 1 is coming this Saturday, along with Update 278, the new big patch. Oh my god, 8 days earlier than they announced previously, but it is awesome. I thought, well, let's give a heads up what is coming this Saturday, so we know what to expect, and uh, let's dive right in. So what is this DLC all about? Well, DLC is about uh, updating the model, uh, animation, sounds, and uh, giving creatures new abilities. In Phase 1, they're gonna update 5 creatures, that's the Procoptodon, the Gigantic, Physicus, the Dire Wolf, the Dire Bear, and the T Rex. But they are also working on other creatures like the Spino, the Sarco, the Carno, the Raptor, the Female Megalosaurus, the Placio, and the Argentavis. For Phase 2, they already announced the Argentavis and the Spino, and they al also showed us a preview for that. On the other creatures, they haven't showed a preview, so I don't know if they come in Phase 2 or maybe in Phase 3. And I think in the future, other creatures will get an update as well. So let's take a quick look at the update for the Procoptodon. The new model on the left, it looks awesome and amazing. Really it does. It looks so much better than the derpy one on the right, the model that we have now. The ears are going to be bigger, also hairy on the inside. The fur is going to be changed more into hair instead of yeah, flaky fur. But the most awesome update on this model is its face. I never understood why they had that outline on the old model, that outline on its face here, on its snout. It is... If they didn't have it, it would look much better already. So, yeah, a weird choice that they had it like that. But the new model, it looks totally cool. Let's see the overall look for the model. You can see definitely the fur is going to be changed. You can see the pouch now clearly as well. With the old model, it is a little bit hidden, but with the new model, you can see it. I think they did a nice job for the new model of the Procoptodon. And I'm really curious about the new animations, the new sounds, and also the new abilities. And about those new abilities for the kangaroo, it will take reduced fall damage, the carry rate is going to be increased, and an awesome thing that they're gonna add is that it can carry small creatures and baby dinos in its pouch. Oh my god. <laughs> can you imagine that you have a baby T-Rex or a baby Giga and you put it in its pouch? How will it look to have small creatures and baby dinos in its pouch? Will the head stick out or not? Or don't we see it at all? I think it is cool that they add this ability and uh, yeah, this comes also I think with a new animation because how are we gonna put di baby dinos and small creatures inside its pouch? I think we need to sit on its back and then you press a button and it will grab the creature and put it in its pouch and then you can travel them to wherever you want. It will also receive a new knockback kick which can affect significantly larger dinos so you can knock back uh, car or maybe even T-Rexes. And with this update the kangaroo can now also aim with a jump. So hold the jump button and you can aim. That is really cool, just like with the Carquinos. So uh, it is not random anymore. No, just aim where you want to jump to. They also say carried characters in a pouch have reduced food consumption rate when carried by a mate boosted female kangaroo. I don't think this is useful because why not just share some food with your tribe mate and it is all fine instead of having a female and a male kangaroo with you in order to unlock this ability. But I think a lot of people will tame the kangaroo for the next ability. It says babies imprinted well in a carried per captain pouch will receive more affinity. So your first imprint on a baby will have more effect when it is in its pouch. And I'm really curious how will this work because if you have a baby Giga that is really big and the baby stage is still 10% so a baby stage of 9 uh, for a Giga it is a really big Giga already. Will it still fit in its pouch? I think larger creatures uh, cannot fit for long in, it, in its pouch so yeah we have to wait and see how this will all work. And then it is time to check out the update for the Giganto Physicus. I think it looks awesome, the new model on the left, it looks more ape-like. And the one on the right, it just looks derpy. And that is mainly because of the eyes. The eyes make it look derpy. If they had different eyes on that model, it would already look better. And you can see the profile on the side, it is more distinct now. And uh, yeah, I, I think I like it. And also the chest is going to be changed, as you can see here as well. The new abilities for the Giganto Physicus are an armor degrading attack. This means means when it fights it will do more damage to your armor's durability. It is important to note that the armor degrading attack will not affect the Gigantophyscus creatures found in the game, so the wild ones don't have that attack. And it will now also be able to climb zip lines. Really? What? <laughs> how will this look? I cannot imagine how will this look. Uh, will it hang on it? Will it walk on it? Oh my god, I'm really curious uh, what the animation will be for this one. You cannot jump between zip lines like you can do now with the Ravager. I think it is cool that they add this, but I really don't know how to imagine this. 
They also add a jump and this is nice because running around with them is nice but not being able to jump over small things. I think it is nice that we can do that now. And it will also be able to carry and throw small creatures. Oh my god, that is so cool. Throw away those Trudons! <laughs> and throwing will be more accurate now. They have added a crosshair for the Gigantophiscus. So it is similar to the throwing stuff of the giant crab. And then the new model of the Diabear. Check it out, this looks so much more brutal than the old one. The old one on the right, it looks uh, like a fluffy teddy bear. It doesn't look angry at all, even though it wants to eat you. Yeah, I don't know, it looks so cute. And the one on the left, the new model, it looks really brutal and much more like a bear that wants to eat you, wants to rip you apart and, and oh my god, I, I love it. It looks so angry, yes. And the fur of the die bear is also going to be changed more hairy now instead of flaky. And I like the fact that it has longer hair on its neck. Really, it makes it look so much better. The new abilities for the die bear are also nice. When you ride it, you will be immune to bees. So bees will not knock you off anymore. They will not attack you. No, they will attack the die bear. The die bear will also be able to harvest honey from well beehives. I think that is nice, but the fact that you don't hurt the beehive and don't attract bees is a little bit stupid in my opinion. Because if you look at the bear claw, it is massive, it is huge. And with this giant claw you can just softly, gently take the honey out of a beehive. No, you're a giant bear with a giant bear claw. Shred it apart, let the bees attack you, take the honey. That is how it should work, at least in my opinion. Oh, and the die bear also gets increased swimming speed. And then the die wolf update. Well, the new model on the left, the fur is nice, the bigger ears are okay for me, the snout is nice. But the look of it, it looks so friendly now. It doesn't look aggressive and angry anymore. So hopefully in the update it will ch be changed because I like to have the wolf a little bit more aggressive looking than it is now with the new model. So come on, please make it look aggressive when it comes out. The new abilities for the die wolves are that it can howl to activate a pack buff for 5 minutes with a minute cooldown. When the alpha howls the whole pack will howl, I think that is cool. And this pack buff will strengthen the whole pack of die wolves including the alpha. It will also get a passive buff, a hunter's instinct, which allow it to sniff out people and creatures with less than 50% health. I'm really curious how this will work. Will we see some kind of a glow around a creature or a human when it has less than 50% health? We have to wait until the update is there and then we can sniff it all out. And the sniff ability can also indicate nearby explorer nodes or detect buried or stealth creatures. And finally the update for the T-Rex. Oh my god, this new model looks so much better than the old one. A lot of people uh, said that the old one was ugly, so I'm really curious uh, what the people will think now of the new model. I think it looks really cool with this aggressive look. The teeth are longer and that makes it also a little bit more scary now. And uh, also the skin has changed a little bit, so the scales are a little bit different than with the old model. I really like this new look of the T-Rex, so I'm really curious, what do you think of this new T-Rex model? The new ability for the T-Rex is a raw, the raw that makes your enemies poop. <laughs> the enemy has to be under a certain drag weight and uh, yeah, it will function as a small stun interruption. There will be a cooldown so victims cannot be uh, poop locked <laughs> and the raw will not be able to scare anything above its level. So if your T-Rex is for example level 50, you are not able to uh, scare anything above it. So a level 51 player cannot be scared by it. It. At least that is how I read it. The raw will cause players to poop but not to stun them. Rex ability to climb over small rocks and steeper slopes have been improved. That is nice so you can now walk over two lego blocks instead of one. <laughs> no really I, I like it because it was so annoying to get stuck with T-Rex over just a small slope or a small stone. So that sums it all up for the TLC update that is coming this Saturday, but I will also want to check out some of the other stuff that is coming along with the patch. Okay, some other things that are going to be changed is for example the Dragon's Firebread direct impact damage will be reduced by 50%, that is a lot. And this is also nice that they gonna fix the Rock Drake and Wyvern eggs not longer to be sinking below their nest over time. It is so annoying that uh, when you come to a nest and you think, what, where is the egg? And then the egg is below the nest and you cannot grab it, but you can see it. Uh, yeah, that is just a little bit silly, so I'm glad they're gonna fix that. You no longer need pheromones to claim the Reaper Kings. 
And then something that will affect, I guess, PvP people more. Brontos and Parasite's breeding time have been increased by 50%. They have now the same breeding stuff as the Quetzal. Also, the health is being reduced for the Bronto, the Parasite and the Giant Squid. And also what they gain per level. Dunkleo uh, resistance to bullets and uh, other resistances are being reduced as well. And the Stego Plate resistance is being reduced to 30%. And you can no longer use the Tech Tapajara to inflict torpor on the Titan, the Crab or the Golem. And they added a Skitty stance to tame dinos. What does this mean? Does it mean uh, when you get attacked they will flee away? Yeah, I don't know if this is useful. Uh, I, I know people would like to have this. I think it can be useful, but uh, having your tamed creatures to run away and run away in the wild... Mm, I don't know. <laughs> The Gigantofiscus can now use the Teleporter and Fortitude now provides some resistance versus the effects of the Rex Raw. If you have enough Fortitude, it will prevent the player-ridden dinos from being poop stunned. <laughs> and the Diabear and Gigantofiscus have been added to Aberration. That is cool that they have an aberrant version for them, but I would like to see more creatures to be aberrant. For example, the Thylaculio would be really good to have on that map because you have no flyers and yeah, you can use the Rock Drake, but I would love to uh, use the Thylaculio as well. And yeah, that, that are the only creatures that can climb and you have the Ravager of course, but it cannot climb walls. So it would be nice to have a Thylaculio there. And the Giga no longer gets raids by fall damage. Oh my god, that is so nice because <laughs> I remember a time on official when we played on official uh, 427. Uh, I was on the Giga of T-Dog. I was walking around to harvest meat and yeah, I fell down a cliff a little bit and it raged, it killed me and uh, oh my god, it was so bad. <laughs> so I'm glad they're gonna remove that now. The Giga Rage mechanic is now based on damage taken before reduction from external sources, such as Saddles and UTs. And this one is also nice, the Phoenix is getting increased health, stamina and weight. And they are just a center gorilla boss, so it matches now the island gorilla boss. So I think they mean uh, maybe the boss fight itself or also the engrams. And then something uh, I really like and I think a lot of other people will like as well. Creative mode building. This is an admin command which you can trigger on yourself or on another player which removes weight restrictions, crafting requirements and it will unlock all the engrams. I think this is really nice because uh, it doesn't affect the whole uh, server so it affects only you or another player. So this is handy for uh, building stuff, it is handy for making events happen and all that kind of things. You must relog to disable the effect, that is something cool and this will be also for Xbox and on PS4. And the way it works, I think, is when you uh, double click, for example, on a stone wall engram, you will get a stone wall. If you uh, click more times, then you get more stone walls. I think that is how it will work. Oh my god, this is also nice. A server option to disable fog. I really not enjoy fog at all. <laughs> it is so annoying. Made the respawning player not targetable by wild AI. That is nice. So when you respawn, uh, you don't get attacked, for example, for the first 10 seconds. That is really nice because often when you wake up, you are not even done with that animation and you get already attacked by a Dilo or whatever. So now you have some time. Okay, something that will affect the PvP players. Uh, when you kill someone with a silencer, uh, they can no longer see that you kill them. Um, that is nice, but also I don't understand. It is enabled by default on console, but it is uh, disabled on PC, at least on official. So why enable it on console and why disable it on PC? I don't understand that. But yeah, silences no longer uh, will show the name of the killer. And then an important notice regarding the upcoming turret chains. So this Saturday, the 10th of February, turrets will be hard numbered limited to 100. This means that you will not be able to build over 100 turrets within a 10k unit radius. However, existing setups with over 100 turrets will still function as normal until the 18th of February. And then they will enable the hard limits which will uh, disable randomly selected turrets that are over the 100 limit. And uh, this has effect on all turrets, so outer turrets, heavy turrets, stack turrets and also plant turrets. And it is no longer map specific. The minimap is also getting an overhaul. It will receive a new me marker. That is a nice and it will, will track rotation. So I think it is some kind of an arrow. 
increase the number of points of interest markers to 30, change the font of the map markers to avoid overlays, the meme marker and points of interest markers are now colorable. Cool. Oh, oh, this is cool. Large underwater rock features on the island can now be built on. Nice. And reduce cloning costs by approximately 40%. I never did that, but I heard people uh, said it was really expensive. Well, now it is reduced by 40%. That is a lot. So I think that will uh, be it for this update video. If you want to read the uh, whole patch notes, go check it out. The link is in the description. And I really love this update about all those creatures. I, I love the TLC update. And I cannot wait to check all the other creatures out. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Leave any thoughts about this video or whatever in the comment below. And as always, if you haven't already and want to see more of me in the future, then smash that subscribe button like a maniac. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.